Hi pals, it's Mick, and as promised in my last video, I'm going to show you the October setup in my bullet journal. So ahead of time, I cut up and tore these bits of craft paper. I think they're quite versatile. They can either make a spread look kind of spooky and a little bit like stained tea paper, or they can sort of make a spread look homey and cute if you pair it with like florals and greens and things like that. But for this spread, obviously for October, it's spooky season and I wanted to make it a little bit creepy and I think that craft paper can achieve that vibe, especially when you put it with things like black cats and moons and metallic which is what I'll be doing today. So first of all you can see I've got my quote page and here I am making a little illustration and before I colour it in I do intend to make it completely black. Before I do that I wanted to let the fine liner dry so that I could erase the grey lead and the graphite wouldn't interfere with the marker that I'm going to use to fill in the cat. So here you have my quote and I decided on a Shakespeare quote. I used to be a really big fan of Shakespeare. I knew quite a lot about it in high school. I actually had a fight with a teacher over him misquoting Shakespeare, which <laughs> now saying it is kind of embarrassing. But at the time I was really passionate about it. I'm not sure why. I think it was because a lot of people in my high school couldn't quite get the hang of iambic pentameter and it was something that I just sort of understood. I just got it. So. I thought that I was really good because of that, I think, and it was something that I clung to because, you know, people like to feel like they're good at stuff. Anyways, I still have a little bit of leftover fondness for Shakespeare and I do quite like this quote and it kind of does feel a little bit like a hellscape here at the moment with lockdown never ending. <laughs> Moving on to the title page for October, I don't know why I thought this was a good idea. I do like how it turned out, but I don't know what gave me the idea. I kind of just wanted to use negative space in some way, and so I did that, and then I combined it with the phases of the moon, and I used the O of October to sort of look like the full moon. That was the intention anyway. And so I guess the negative space kind of, I think in hindsight, looks like maybe a little bit glowy from the moon. I'm not sure. Either way, it was just an idea that I had and this is actually one of the first bullet journal spreads that I've come up with on my own and not taken inspiration from anybody else. Obviously there's inspiration in there from like, you know, October being spooky and people doing spooky themes in the past, but I didn't specifically look anybody up and try and have a take on their theme or anything like that. So for the moon and a couple of the elements on the title page, I'm now getting out my metallic watercolour paints. They're the, from the brand Clearo, and I actually don't remember where I got them, but I will find out and put it in the description box below if you're interested. So I've coloured in the full moon here, then I decided to paint these rays kind of coming out from it. And this was probably the most difficult part of the entire spread, working around my camera setup and trying to paint a straight line 
and having to go over it a few times as well. I, I kind of cut out quite a bit of footage there of me going over and over these lines trying to get them to be more opaque because obviously this metallic watercolour isn't super opaque. And for that same reason I had to go over the O in October as the full moon a couple of different times as well. I was struggling to get it to stay nicely at the very top of it so I had to sort of dab it on and that created kind of a texture which I ended up liking. This next spread is a combination of quite a few things, as you can see I'm adding in the craft paper again, but the point of making this quite a few things is because I realised that I really don't utilise my monthly calendars very often and I wanted to make an effort to change that. I'm a fan of habit trackers and mood trackers. Mood trackers less so because I do feel quite limited in explaining my emotions with little motifs, but I decided to try it this month by using the phases of the moon. I'm sorry about the angle here, I did actually film two angles, but the other phone that I used as a camera crapped out on me, decided it didn't have any more storage space and it just deleted the whole thing. But I'll be using those as a scale from really bad to really good. The new moon I'll be using as really bad and the full moon I'll be using as really good. And then I'm gonna pop up to the top of the page again and create the header for the calendar. And the way that I did this, I decided to use a ruler this time and I did a couple of dots on either end of the line so that I didn't overshoot it. The reason for this is just because it's really difficult to see where I want to end the line without sticking my head in view of the camera. The downshot of it is that you can kind of see it a little bit afterwards because I wasn't careful with the placement, but there is a real need for it for the horizontal line separating the weeks. And you can see that in two of them I actually went a little bit too far, so I've just gone in with some white Signo gel pen and covered that up. It's a nice little hack if you make a mistake in your bullet journal. You do have to go over it a couple times and I did edit that out a little bit, but yeah, you can just sort of scribble over it with a white gel pen. You just have to make sure that you wait until it dries before you turn the page. Then I decided to use my stamping kit to create the title for October and obviously then I just need to go through and label the days of the month. I made a little mistake in this as well, I ended up writing 28 in one box to the left of where it should have been, but I decided that I didn't care enough to try and white it out and move it across because even though the white gel pen does help a lot, it isn't quite opaque enough to completely cover everything, so it's good for small mistakes, not as good for bigger mistakes like a whole number, so I just decided to leave the 28 as it was. I also use my white gel pen to go through and label the days of the week across the top of the calendar and as you'll see I have to go over it quite a few times because like I've said the white gel pen that I have isn't entirely opaque and it does help to go over it a few times so that when it dries it doesn't go too translucent. I decided to use a ruler again to outline the habit trackers that I've decided to use for this month and I decided to just stick with the shape of the month if that makes sense. So basically it's just one little box for each day of the month and that made up this shape for the entire month if you were to set them up kind of like a calendar. I don't know how to better explain it than that, I'm sorry I know it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And then I'm moving on to the little doodles that I put in the bottom right hand corner of the page to kind of spruce the page up a bit, make it a little bit more spooky. I decided to go with a specimen jar of a snake and the reason for this is because I just think that they're really really beautiful. I know they're not for everybody, I know that they creep some people out, which is part of the reason to use them for an October spread. 
but also I think it's a lovely way to show off a beautiful specimen, especially if they're collected humanely and not killed for the purpose of making a specimen, and so I wanted to include that. I coloured it all in black and then I thought that was a little bit too boring, so I decided to incorporate the metallics again and just give him a little pattern all the way down his back. And I also have a little fortune teller crystal ball on the right there and I decided to give that a couple of accents of gold as well. I actually have a little lamp that I got for Christmas one year from one of my friends that looks like this, but mine is supposed to be a little moon lamp and it changes colours and stuff, but that's where the inspiration for this one came. And instead of making it a moon lamp, I decided to make it a crystal ball. Maybe making it a moon lamp would have made more sense with the rest of the theme, but anyway, I decided to make a crystal ball. In hindsight, I think I would have preferred if I coloured it all in black. I think that would have looked kind of cool. Now we have my final spread and it's the first weekly of the month. When I went into this I kind of wanted to replicate like a medical chart of some kind, even though I've never seen a medical chart and I never looked one up, I just had this idea in my head and this is what I went with. So I put a little bulldog clip at the top of each page and I accented that with the metallics again just to tie everything in. I also stamped in the days of the week because I like that look and I do think it ties the aesthetic of the spread together. And here you'll be able to see me showcasing my ability to freehand a straight line because I decided not to use a ruler for these ones. I think when I use a ruler for lines I do expect them to come out perfect and that's not always the case, so sometimes when I use a ruler I find myself more disappointed than if I do have a wonky line because I tried to do it freehand. I think that freehand just, I don't know, if you move your whole arm rather than just your wrist, it's relatively easy to achieve and it takes a little bit of practice for sure, but when you get the hang of it, it's way more rewarding than using a ruler and takes about half the time. Also, as you can see in the corners, I've done a couple of drawings. I didn't mention them at the time because it was hard to see me doing them, so I apologise for that. These boxes, I just cut them into smaller sections because I wanted to have the bigger sections, obviously, for the drawings but then that meant that there was an uneven amount of space for the days of the week and to make them even I just cut out that little box in each Sunday for the first week and Saturday for the second week and I don't know, I, I like the way that it looked anyway so I was happy with that and I just put some hatching in each of them to sort of make them look like they were intentional. I kind of wish that I had coloured them all entirely in black, I think that that would have tied into the theme a little bit better, but there you have it. And here, as we go through the flip through, I would like to say thank you for watching the video. Please give it a like if you liked it, share it if you think it's worth sharing, and because this was a setup done for my friend Brendan from work, I would also like to plug him a little bit here. So if you could please go and follow him on his Twitch channel, I think it's pronounced Argentimes, or it could be Argentimes, I'm not sure. But yeah, go give him a follow and a sub if you can. And thank you so much for watching. Hopefully I'll see you all again next week, but just like before. No promises. Bye pals.